Willow Shoreline Church, uh, I, I'm loving sharing these devotions with you, and I'm hoping at kind of middle of the week each week, these are an encouragement and a blessing and inspire you, just kind of give you a boost uh, of the truth of God's word and some inspiration as you live for Jesus. Today's passage is found in Matthew chapter 9, and this is a passage that's probably one of the greatest guiding Bible passages in my life. I try to live out this passage on a daily basis. Uh, I not only am called to be a pastor, but I have a gifting and a calling of an evangelist. I love to share faith. I like to train people through Organic Outreach International and in my own life with other pastors, equip people to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus more effectively. And this passage really speaks to my heart about that. I hope it speaks to yours. So listen to these words from Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and all the villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he, Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. They were just like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciples, to his followers, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Well, a few insights here that I think are important for us as people seeking to follow and walk with Jesus. First is we see the compassion of Jesus. When he looks at people who are broken and sinful, caught into sinful lifestyles, living in rebellion, he's not filled with anger and hatred. I mean, he hates sin, but he looks at those people and it says he has compassion on them because he sees that they're harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus looks at lost people with compassion, with a tender heart, like a wandering sheep that doesn't know where to go, that could fall off a cliff, that could get caught in the briar patch and just be stuck there and starve to death because it can't get out. He just says, man, there's people stuck in a lot of ways, but I have compassion on them. We should pray and say, Lord, give me the compassion you have for people. Let me look at people and see them as being harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then Jesus talks about the reality of the world. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This kind of reverses what I think a lot of times in our minds we think. We think that, boy, the church is filled with love, and we as Christians are we're out there sharing our faith and praying for people, and the world is tough and resistant. But Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, lost people are hungry, lost sheep are longing to be brought home. People are longing for more in their lives, for meaning, for what Jesus can offer. The harvest is plentiful, and here's what he says, but the workers are few. Who are the workers? That's us, that's Christians. He says the workers are few. We have to hear the truth of Jesus. I think in every century, at all times through history, with the church, people's hearts are more open than we realize and we're not as engaged as we could be. Would you open your heart and say, Lord, I wanna get in the game, man. I wanna, I wanna pray for people more. I wanna love people more. I wanna share the good news of Jesus more. When we do training here at the church, will you be part of that training? When you think about people that don't know Jesus, would you pray, Lord, give me opportunities to shine your light, to share a story of how you've changed my life, to share about how I came to faith in you? Because the harvest is plentiful, the problem is the workers are few. And then Jesus says, I want you to pray. But the prayer is very interesting. He says, pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that God Almighty, would send workers out into the harvest field. What's the focal point of our prayers? Lord, send me, send us, send any Christian I know. The focus of our prayer should be, Lord, soften heart of hearts, and it should be, Lord, open doors to share the gospel. But Jesus says, you wanna know what the most important prayer is? God, send us. Pray, Lord of the harvest, send your workers out into the harvest. Would you begin to pray with greater passion for yourself? Lord, send me out to share your love, to share your grace. Would you pray for Shoreline Church? Lord, send us out. Send out workers into the harvest field. Would you pray for, for another church, for your church? Lord, send our congregation with a new passion for the gospel out with your love. Would you pray for churches all over the world? Lord, send us out. I'm gonna pray with you about that right now. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord of the harvest, send workers out into the harvest, and first among those workers, may we go. We're not praying, Lord, that you'll send other people because we don't wanna do it. We're praying that you'll send us along with all of your people, that as we walk into the world, we shine your light, we share your love, we tell your stories, we reflect your glory, we show graciousness, we fight for justice. Lord, Lord, we, we show compassion. We model what it means, O oh Lord, to maybe not agree with someone, but to love them with tenderness anyways. Lord, let us shine your light in every way possible. 
Send us out as workers into the harvest field. Bring in a harvest of people who will know and love Jesus. And Lord, may you get all the glory. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you join us this Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock for worship. If you're going to be in the courtyard or in the parking lot uh, with, with your car there, then will you go online right now and register for your number of spaces and we'll have a spot with your name on it ready to go. If you're going to be at home, just make sure you jump in at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and we'll see you this Sunday.